Around the world, each country has their own social distancing rules. Here in the UK, they're constantly updated. But there are a couple which seem set in stone, and that is to maintain a two meter distance from others where possible, and to wear a face mask in most indoor spaces. But let's be honest, not everyone sticks to the rules. So a number of tech solutions have been brought to market to try and help people stick to the guidelines. Let's take a look at a few. Occucon have come up with an artificial intelligence solution that identifies when a person is walking towards the store and counts the number of people entering and exiting. Once the maximum occupancy limit is reached, the doors lock and only open up again once there is more room inside. Though it is probably one for the bigger chains, as this solution will cost around £6,000. So in a bid to make people feel safe enough to go back into stores, even smaller businesses are adopting high-tech solutions. Vidicon have created a system that can detect whether someone is wearing a mask or not when entering a premises. If they are, great, you can walk on through. And if not, a screen displays a warning to remind them to put one on before coming in. The AI has trained using thousands of images of people wearing masks, but it's still fairly new. So just how accurate is this? So, so as long as that stays green, it's working. And this works again. What if I cover my eyes? Hold on. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. Green. green. Oh, it didn't do it that time. I'm going to see if I can try and trick the AI wearing this. Man, I thought I was being smart. I thought by printing this out, I could trick it into thinking that I was going in without a mask. Nah, that's quite annoying. <laughs> nose mouth, nose mouth, like that. My days, my days. So I was able to fool it a couple of times, but the company does admit it has some work to do. We found the system to be um, incredibly accurate using a whole host of masks. The mask you're showing me there has a picture of a nose and a face on it. If we find there's problem masks, we can very quickly teach the system what that mask is and it will therefore be able to identify it. But this system is still quite expensive, costing around £3,000 to install. But with both solutions we've looked at so far, they can be valuable in another way too. When members of the public are approached and, and requested or, or asked politely to put a mask on, um, I think that can be quite a personal thing. They can start acting a little bit hostile in the worst case scenario. Since we've had the system installed, it's taken a lot of the confrontation out. So I definitely would say mental health, uh, both with the team and also with the customers, has, has been improved. Now, what about the outdoors? This temperature sensing helmet is something we featured briefly on the show a few months ago and we've finally been able to get our hands on it. Just behind the visor is an augmented reality eyepiece that displays an overlay on what is in front of you, telling you the temperature of a person. And if they're over a certain limit, it could be an indicator that they may have a symptom of COVID-19. Developed by KC Wearable, this helmet is primarily used by police forces in China, but now also being used internationally to survey areas with a large volume of people. Now, there's something in common with all of these products. Maybe you've noticed it. All of them were designed before the pandemic with other uses in mind and are now trying to quickly adjust their devices to market them as something to help in the fight against the spread of COVID-19. So there needs to be a way to test these products to see if they've been repurposed effectively. And that's why we're here today at a research event where they'll be looking at these distance sensing devices to see how well they alert you when you're within someone's two meter proximity. And they're doing that by running through three different scenarios. The first is the chat in the kitchen where two people will move in closer to someone standing by the sink to see how quickly the devices go off once they move within two meters of them. Second is the walk down the corridor where two people will walk past each other this is done at different speeds to see if the devices can pick up such a quick passing by. And the third is the close, but not close enough, to see if the devices can tell that a wall separates the two people in close range and instead won't go off. Now, these accessories use one of three different kinds of radio waves to detect another. The well-known Bluetooth, 
the lesser known ultra wideband, which is used by many tracking devices and now also appearing in smartphones, or a combination of both to maximize range. Bluetooth devices didn't fare well and failed all the tests. It isn't very accurate if the devices are obscured. Ultra wide band ones performed very well as its accuracy is roughly five to 10 centimeters and the combo products did well too. But all of them failed the wall scenario and that's not good enough. There is a lot of hype uh, around the IoT and the entry uh, barrier is really low. So you're gonna find there a lot of devices pretending uh, to do some things that actually they don't deliver. Proper evaluation of devices and solutions uh, is important. Many companies are bringing their solutions to the market and as keen as they are, whether their main intent is to sell or to help, the most important thing is that it works.